Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, May 1st, and it is a cloudy but not too cold day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Got some yard work to do soon, so uh, as soon as it warms up a bit more, I'll be out there weeding. Eh, gotta do it. Weeds took off like crazy this year. Um, before I had a chance to, to get them under control, they just went wild, so I gotta, gotta deal with that. I'm enjoying some haunted bookshop in this uh, Jason Mouton Hawkbill. Very nice pipe. Love the rustication on this pipe. It's got that whale spine uh, that Jason uses so effectively. So today I want to talk about uh, clay pipes because uh, th these came up on a live stream a couple weeks ago and I thought yeah, it's probably something worth talking about a bit. Uh, they're interesting. But before I do that, I want to do a, a quick VR for my friend uh, Luke, the Cincinnati Piper. Uh, Luke is celebrating uh, 500 subs, and I believe it's his second year on YouTube. I might be wrong about that. It's some anniversary. I think it was number two. Now, if you don't know Luke, and there'll be link, a link below to his uh, giveaway announcement and stuff, say hello, give him a subscription. Luke's a great guy. Uh, I've known Luke for a couple of years now. I've, uh, Luke, Luke is, uh, was in the military, served his country, uh, which I'm very grateful for, for all the work he did. Uh, I've followed him in, in some of his travels. I've followed him and his beautiful family on Instagram and just really have, have gotten to know Luke quite well. We've chatted uh, several times talked about our faith, talked about life, talked about cigars. Uh, Luke's a friend, and I'm I'm really happy that he's hit the 500 sub mark, and I'm really happy that uh, he he continues to be a part of our community because he's he's a he's a good friend. So. Luke has asked us to answer three questions. And by the way, Luke, I, I'm doing this to help you out and promote the channel. I don't want to be entered in the, in the giveaway. So if, uh, if my name comes up, just put it back into the, to the drawing. So Luke asked three questions, and I'm going to do my best to answer them. And they're, they're fun questions. So the first question, he wants to know, who's the coolest cat in the, the YTPC? I hate these kinds of questions, but it's kind of fun to think about. And, you know, you pick one person, you immediately exclude 20,000 people. And honestly, I think you're all cool cats. I mean, we're pipe smokers, right? How could we not be? But I got to pick one. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have fun with this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a bit facetious about it, although I do like the guy a lot. Uh, I'm going to say the coolest cat in the YTPC is Phil Rivara. And the reason is, I mean, not that he's a fantastic guy and, and you know, does some great videos and live streams, a wonderful pipe maker, uh, makes some really beautiful pipes, does fantastic metal work, makes tampers and reamers and walking sticks and just very talented guy. It's not for any of that. It's because Phil was adopted by a rooster. And I think he's the only guy in the YTPC that has his own rooster friend. So, Phil, you're pretty cool. The second question was, what if, if you had to grow vegetables to feed yourself, what, uh, what vegetables would you grow? I think he wanted to get three. I, I hope I got that right. And I, I, I don't know if what he means is, you know, if you're, just, if you're growing vegetables because you like certain vegetables and, and those are the ones you're going to grow, or it's the zombie apocalypse and you've got to feed your family. Um, if it's the latter, uh, you know, I'm going to go with, with things that grow easily and are staples and are fairly nutritious. So what would that be? Um, I want to say potatoes, but I don't know how easy it is to grow potatoes. I've never grown them, but ah, I'll put them on the list. I'll, I'll learn if it's the zombie apocalypse. Yeah, probably potatoes, um, tomatoes, because I can't imagine living without them. And if I got to pick a third one, some kind of bean, because beans are um, 
very nutritious and you know good source of protein so you know some kind of maybe a maybe I like lima beans so I'm gonna go with lima beans now if it's just for my own eating enjoyment um, tomatoes would be number one on the list after that would probably be string beans and then some kind of leafy green uh, spinach or lettuce or something like that yeah there's my three vegetables the the last one is a lot of fun uh, Luke got himself some chickens and uh, he named them and he named them very creatively well his, his daughter named one his wife named a couple and, and then he named one and they're all great names but I, I particularly love his uh, his chicken named uh, Margaret Hatcher <laughs> and that's funny to me because I actually named my dog Thatcher after Margaret so uh, get a bit of a connection there uh, if I had to name three chickens uh, staying in that vein of, uh, of, of uh, conservatism I think I would have to go with uh, Marie Lehen for the first one uh, the second I'm, I'm assuming we need three the second um, I'd have to name it Couch because Couch likes it when you name things after him. So yeah, the second chicken would definitely be Couch. And my third chicken would be Nuggets. Anyway, Luke, congratulations on your, your 500 sub milestone and your, your YouTube anniversary. And uh, wish you all the best. All right, so on to clay pipes. So. You know, clay pipes are an odd thing. I've seen, you know, there's quite a few videos on them. And I just thought it'd be fun to talk about and to get one out. I have several clay pipes. This is one that I've smoked a fair amount. You can see there's some discoloration there. I, I tried to sand that off this morning because I was curious if it was surface, you know, just from me handling it or if it was actually coming through. And it, while it did get lighter with sanding, I could not sand it out. So I guess that is actually permeating through the bowl. Um, yeah, they're, they look very fragile. They are to some extent, but they're not. You know, if you drop it on a concrete floor, you're probably going to have pieces of a pipe. But if you're, you know, just handling it normally, it's, it's, it's not going to just crack. Um, these are historically really interesting so the, and I'm gonna load this with some haunted bookshelf while I talk uh, and you can't clench them so I'm like I almost tried but can't clench them so the clay pipes were, were made um, I believe in England first and this is uh, sort of the end of 16th century uh, right after Sir Walter Raleigh uh, brings tobacco back and they were pretty consistently made from from late 16th century all the way up to uh, the 1950s and and remained you know the popularity waxed and waned over time but uh, they remained sort of a staple for pipe smokers uh, right up into the 50s which is surprising but true the thing that changed most over time is the size of the bowl so the early ones were very small because tobacco was very rare and expensive and as tobacco became more plentiful the bowl size increased and that's actually true of uh, briar pipes as well now this one is an example that I I purchased from Penn Valley Pipes and they sell a, a, a wide selection of, of clay pipes. I recommend you look up Penn Valley Pipes and I'll put a link below to, to their shop. Um, no affiliation, just happy customer. And if I remember correctly, this is an Elizabethan or Shakespearean, uh, Shakespearean? Yeah. example. Uh, so this is of that era, the, the shape. <clears throat> They're made of clay. They're actually, the, the process is fascinating. And I found a video that actually shows uh, the making of clay pipes uh, from a, a archival footage from the 1930s. Uh, I'll link to that below because it's, it's really worthwhile watching. Uh, this was an English, I can't remember the town in England, but an English uh, factory that, that made the pipes. And they're, they're hand rolled 
they're put into a mold. Oh, before they're put into a mold, someone has to thread a wire through the, the, the stem, which is just amazing to me. I mean, I can't drill a, a straight hole that deep on a lathe, and these people are just threading a wire through and getting it dead center. It goes into a press. The bowl is, is, is sort of formed out by, by pushing a, a piece in. Uh, then they take it out, they clean it up, it gets um, kiln-fired, and um, then it's ready to smoke. So, really, really fascinating video. Please check that out. I think you'll enjoy it. They're good for tasting tobacco because they don't ghost. And that's the reason I, I bought a couple of them. Let me light this up. bought a couple of them because I was going through a phase where I was tasting a lot of blending tobaccos. You know, like the 15 different types of burleys you can get, and the 5 or 6 different types of Virginias, and then all the Orientals and Condimentals. And I wanted to be able to get a fairly clean flavor from that. And one thing you need to know if you're going to smoke a, a clay pipe is the bowl gets incredibly hot so you're not going to hold it like this and that that hurt and I, you saw i just lit the darn thing there's a lot of different ways you can you can hold it i mean you can hold it like this you can do the pencil grip sort of thing i was i, I read something at some point that said that this nub is actually not just decorative it's to hold your finger against while you hold it like this and I've also seen paintings where it's held like this the nice thing about that is you can kind of get a sense of the heat of the bowl and you know change your cadence if you need to the smoke is cool um, dry you know the clay is absorbent so that helps a lot uh, these were made in a variety of sizes, you know, quite short, uh, with with molded stems on them. Uh, extremely long church wardens. The church wardens so long that you would have to get somebody else to light them. And they were very popular in taverns. And from what I understand, you would go into the tavern and there would be a rack of of clay church warden type pipes and you could take one and smoke it and after it was after you were done smoking it you broke the end off and it would be put back in the rack for, for the next customer um, interesting concept and then they got shorter and shorter and eventually they were thrown away and it's actually quite common to find very old clay pipes in certain places Uh, in the U.S., um, Civil War battlefields are, are common places where they're found. Uh, and there's other sort of archaeological sites. I think a lot of them are found in Williamsburg. And they, they just can be found, you know, when, when a foundation is being put in for a house. They're, they're very, very common because they were essentially a disposable pipe. Um, there's a video... that I will also link below that I recommend you watch um, where a woman takes us along the Thames River in, in London and there's a phenomenal number of, of these pipes that you can find along the river because what apparently happened is the tavern owners once they you know the pipes got too short and they gathered up all the broken uh, pieces of stem and everything they would just take it to the river and dump it in and you can find quite a few clay pipes there. That's another, that, that video is also really nice because she takes the time to show her collection and you get to see a lot of the, the variety in pipes and, and how um, this is a very plain one, but they would have uh, figures on them uh, or various types of, uh, I can't say carvings because they were molded in, moldings, I guess you would say.
another tip for these is the clay tends to get sticky um, when you're smoking it. Sticky is not the right word. Like if you put your fingers on it, it doesn't stick, but it sticks to your lips and it can actually uh, pull skin off <laughs> if, if you keep it in too long. And you will see these uh, coated with either wax or lacquer uh, for the first inch or so. And that, that's a traditional thing as well. And it just prevents that from that sticking from happening. And there's also examples uh, of pipes that were made with a mortise to accept a stem. And there's some modern versions of that. I believe Penn Valley Pipes has some that have horn stems. Uh, the the older ones were actually designed to, to accept a goose bone, and I don't know which bone in the goose, but <laughs> I'm sure there's a long, thin bone that could be easily hollowed out and, and would be placed in there. And I guess that would give you more smoking from the same pipe, or maybe it was just more comfortable to put the bone in your mouth. It's probably one of the wing bones. Yeah, but they're uh, they're fun. They're different. It's not something I'm going to smoke every day. Why well, don't? I mean, I've had this pipe probably for close to ten years now, and this is the first time I'm smoking it in probably seven years. You are going to need church warden pipe cleaners if you if you get one of these which is fine you know and again you're not going to smoke it every day so but just a fun little piece of history as to the you know not ghosting thing that that's nice but honestly if you if you want to do tobacco tasting i think a corn cob one of those little corn cobs is probably just as good so I wouldn't recommend buying one just for that. But they're cheap. Um, they're actually cheaper than corn cobs in some cases. You can spend more on them. I mean, there's some that are like $40, $50. The more or ornamental ones. But these basic simple ones, I think, are like maybe $10. I just looked quickly at their website this morning, so I didn't actually check on the price of this. But when I bought it, I think it was 7 or $8. Yeah, so it's something that probably every pipe smoker should at least try, just to say you have, and, and to get the experience. And they're pretty cool looking too. You know, if you got a, if you got a display rack, having one of these on it is, is going to be nice. Yeah, so that's clay pipes. So I highly recommend you check out those two videos that, that will be linked below. Um, just a lot of really cool historical information in both of them. And I highly recommend that you go check out uh, Luke Cincinnati Piper because uh, you'll enjoy him. He's, he's, uh, he's a good guy. And uh, enter his giveaway. Yeah. Spread the word. Well, other than finishing my clay pipe and going back to my uh, Jason Mouton pipe, what am I going to do today? Uh, I'm not going to do a whole heck of a lot. i, I got to do some yard work, like I said, and uh, maybe play with the dogs for a while, see if they want to fetch. The one dog loves to fetch. The other dog just looks at me like I'm crazy. Oh, you might notice the, the angle is very different here. This is temporary, but I'm building, finally building that rack to hold my Rubbermaid tubs. And I had to rearrange everything to get, uh, I will show you. I had to get the monster chop saw out. Slowly, slowly getting back to a, an organized 
state and uh, this is a big part of that because the, it's going to be a large rack that's going to hold 10 tubs uh, two on top one on top of another five across and then I'm putting a top on that and that will be a place for me to store things like the chop saw which I don't use often but I need to when I do use it I bring it out and put it on saw horses or even put it on top of my table saw sometimes or on my workbench which is currently covered with junk so that my planer things like that can all go there I'm going to set up my photo booth which you probably saw up in the the side there I'm going to set that up on top of it and I'm thinking those shelves that I've got are they're just not very functional they're those wire shelves and they're full of junk so I'll clean those off maybe put new shelves in above it and that's going to provide a lot of storage so good good uh storage space which will then allow me to de-junkify <laughs> the rest of the shop and then it's just down to cleaning out drawers and getting things organized so we're getting there we're getting there it's taken years but but somebody said when, when i talked about this a couple years ago when i got this area set up and i said it's only a quarter of the shop and it's a lot more to do i think it was actually steph uh from steph and skip that said um you're never finished you're, you're just going to keep wanting to to change things and and she's right and that's kind of the the beauty of this kind of a having something like this in your life there's always something to do you're never bored <laughs> certainly never bored and uh i know i can always come down here if i've got a spare hour even a spare 20 minutes and do something and feel like i've made a difference Maybe not a difference in the world, but a difference in my life, at least. Well, friends, that's the shop update. Um, hope you are having a very enjoyable Sunday. And are looking forward to the week ahead. Uh, once again, check out Luke, Cincinnati Piper. You'll, you'll enjoy his channel. And Luke, uh, good luck on the giveaway. Hope all goes well. With that, I am going to draw this to a close. So... Thank you for watching, and until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.